All right, class. So we are here in um, chapter three, section two now, and we're continuing to talk about this idea of atomic theory. We just looked at Thompson's um, plum pudding idea, and we just talked about Rutherford's idea of what's inside the atom. And here's what we know so far. We know there's this thing called an atom. We know it can be broken up, and there's some part of it that's negative, and there's some part of it that's positive. And so when we look and we go back and we see, uh, also according to what Rutherford said, was that there's something in there that's neutral. There's some other particle in there that has the mass that's equivalent to a proton, but it doesn't have a charge. And so whether or not we know what it is, we do know there's these three elements here. Something with mass with no charge, something with mass with a positive charge, and something with very little mass and a negative charge. And so Rutherford wanted to test Thompson's plum pudding theory. He wanted to see and wanted to prove that the idea of what the atom looked like uh, and how all those particles or subatomic particles were arranged. So let's look back at Thompson's model. Just a reminder, Thompson's model was this plum pudding idea. We don't really eat plum pudding, but we can think of it as like dirt pudding. When I have dirt pudding, I have my pudding, and I have all my cookie crunches that are just mixed randomly throughout the pudding. So that is what Thompson thought. He thought that we would have some kind of goo area that could be probably some positive stuff. So he didn't really know, but he just said there's a bunch of positiveness. And then mixed throughout are these chunks of negative, negative electrons. And so when we go into Rutherford, he wanted to test this, part, this idea out. So what he did was he used alpha particles. And he basically just bombarded some gold foil to try to see what would happen. To give you an idea, um, let's think about it this way. Let's say I have a tennis ball. And let's say that this tennis ball glows in the dark. And when this tennis ball glows in the dark and I'm in a black room, what would happen if I threw this glow-in-the-dark tennis ball off of a wall that I didn't know was there, but I knew it existed because I saw the way the glow-in-the-dark tennis ball behaved? Well, even though I can't see what I'm talking about, because of the way that the glow-in-the-dark tennis ball behaved, I could get an idea about what was going on. And that is kind of what Rutherford did. So we look here on the next slide. This is how he set up his experiment. He had something that shot out alpha particles. All right. And this alpha particle, if you remember, is just two protons and two neutrons with no electrons. So in other words, this is a helium. We have a helium here with no electrons. And so it's a positively charged helium that he is shooting out. And he was thinking that somewhere inside here that if this positive and neutral was just intermittently spread out, he expected this beam to just simply shoot right through the plum pudding model and right through the foil and go through it like it's nothing. The book describes what happened was he was expecting to shoot a cannonball through a tissue paper. So if you took a cannonball and you shot through a tissue paper, you would expect the cannonball just to easily rip the tissue paper and keep going unobstructed. But what they said happened was when they shot the cannonball to the tissue paper, it was so amazing. It was as if a cannonball actually hit a tissue paper and bounced back and hit him in the face. So what he expected to happen was a straight laser to go through or the straight shot to go through. But what really happened was when he shot it, a lot of portion did go through. So a bunch of the alpha particles did make it through the, the gold foil. But what else happened was amazing. Some of those alpha particles were being redirected. They deflected somehow. And some of them even bounced back. So what's going on here? Again, let's go back to the idea that I have a glow-in-the-dark tennis ball, and I'm in a pitch black room, and I'm just trying to get a feel for what's around me when I'm shooting this glow-in-the-dark ball. So that's the idea of this screen here. This fluorescent screen could detect all these little movements and light up an uh, 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 illustration for us to see what's going on with those alpha particles. Well, as he was shooting it through, since most of them went through, that kind of tells us that the atom is mostly empty. If most of my alpha particles go through unobstructed, whatever's going on in the, in the atom is empty and it's going through, and it's kind of like the plum pudding idea where there's nothing there to stop it. However, since some of them are bouncing off and some are even coming back, it has to tell us there has to be something in the center or in the core of it that has some kind of density, some kind of substance. And whatever it is, it has to be heavier and more dense than an alpha particle. Because remember, this alpha particle is four times the mass of one proton. And this alpha particle is two, or it would be 8,000 times the mass of one electron, because one electron is two thousandths 
of a proton, and this was four, four times the mass of one proton. So this was 8,000 times more mass than just an electron. So the idea is, what is it? What's in the center of an atom that caused some of these alpha particles to bounce around or, and to deflect? And so here's the results. Most of the particles pass through. One in 8,000 bounce back. And some of those particles completely reverse their path. And this was astonishing to them. And so it led to the idea that in our atom, we must have some kind of dense area, and the rest of it must be empty space. And they were also able to deduce that if my alpha particle, if you remember, if it had a positive charge or had a positive two charge, when it went to the nucleus, it did not stick to the nucleus. Instead, the nucleus made it bounce away and reflect. And so you think about two magnets. What happens when two magnets of the same charge come in contact? They push each other away. So if the alpha particles that I am throwing into the middle of that gold foil do not stick, but they go through and they get deflected, that tells us about the charge of the nucleus. And it tells us that if my alpha particle is positive, my nucleus must also be positive. And so here's an illustration of what was going on inside the atom when the alpha particles were being shot through the aluminum foil. Well, I'm sorry. First of all, let's go through this. We learned that the atom is mostly empty, that there's some small dent at the center, and that small dent center must have a positive piece to it or a positive element, and that the alpha particles are, that come close to it are deflected or even um, rebound completely. So here's the illustration of what it would have looked like. You got alpha particles coming through. Some of them don't even hit. Some hit and deflect. Some hit and completely turn around. And so again, we're talking about millions of alpha particles going through the center of an atom. Most of them go through, but some of them hit and, and return. Again, because they did not stick to the center dense nucleus area, we determined that this has to have a positive charge, and it has to be where most of the density is. So I hope this helps when you're trying to read through your, your notes and study, um, but you will see that Rutherford came up with the idea that our atoms have a hard, dense nucleus that are positively charged, and that our electrons exist out here, and we'll talk more about our electron cloud uh, on the next video. Thanks.